What's up guys, it's Sebastian here from the Noble Frugal Studio. Today, I'm gonna show you the basics of animation in Clip Studio Paint as simply as possible. Whenever I get my hands on a new software, I just like to start making stuff instead of spending hours and hours learning all its different features. Then when I get my workflow down, I'll dig in more to the little details. So let's just get a basic animation workflow down and call it a day, shall we? This video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. If you want to animate along with me, you can get a free month three trial by following the link in the description below. Make sure you select the EX version of Clip Studio Paint to use your trial on because that's the one we're using today. Let's get started. When you open up Clip Studio Paint, you're gonna see Clip Studio Paint EX window open just like this. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas to start animating. We're gonna go to file, go to new, then this window will come up. You can give your file a name. Let's just name this animation. You can select a preset. I have my preset set to the one where I make my YouTube thumbnails, but so that'll be fine for me. As long as my width and height are 1920 by 1080, I'm all set. You can select a paper color. I'm just gonna double click that and select something a little closer to white. Maybe something a little more papery as well. All right, and then I'm gonna hit okay. Now this window will come up. Well, actually more realistically, it will look like this without all that stuff on the bottom. Okay, as usual, you can just draw on this canvas, but today we're gonna be focusing on animation. If you wanna learn the basics of Clip Studio Paint, check out the video I just linked in the card. So to get started animating in Clip Studio Paint, I'm gonna bring up the timeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Window and go to Timeline. Let me get this window here on the bottom. Next, all we gotta do is come over down here and select new timeline. The timeline's name is timeline one, that's fine. Frame rate 24, I always recommend using 24 frames per second unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Scene number one, shot number one, all that stuff looks fine, so I'm just gonna hit okay. Okay, now we have our new timeline, and the only other thing we need is also the layers window. Now, usually my layers are over here, but if you don't have them, just go to window and layer. And the reason I say that is now you can actually see that this background layer called paper is showing up here in the timeline as well as in our layers tab. See these two tabs correspond with each other. All right, making sure that we selected layer one. Now to actually animate with Clip Studio Paint, we have to make a new animation folder. We can tap this icon here to do that. An animation folder in Clip Studio Paint is a group layer that contains all of your animation frames. It's very similar to the columns in OpenTunes. All right, now we can make our first frame by hitting new animation cell right here. So this is frame one. We can go ahead and draw our first frame on the canvas. Just make it something simple like a ball. All right, if I wanna draw my next frame, I just tap on the timeline, we selected frame two, then hit new animation cell. You can draw the ball again, but I wanna be able to see the previous frame in order to draw this one. So I'm just gonna go down here and hit onion skin. And now I can see the previous frame while I'm on frame two. Let's just draw another ball and keep going by drawing on frame three, four, So now my ball is coming back up, but I can't see the first frame in order to reference it. We have to edit the onion skin settings in order to do that. So click these three bars right here, scroll up to show animation cells and then onion skin settings. Then we get this window. Currently we can see the previous two frames or the previous two cells and the next two cells. So I'm gonna set this maybe to, let's do 10 on each side. So previous frames are gonna be red, next frames are going to be blue. Here you can set the opacity level. So the most immediate cell is going to be 20% opacity. And then as it goes back one, it's gonna decrease by 10. So I'm gonna make the most immediate one 40. And the step opacity will be 10, that sounds good. Let's hit okay, put that up a little higher. Let's put start is 80. All right, see we're a little off center. All right, cool, now we can use the play button to play and pause our animation. But as you can see, we got plenty of frames to use and our animation ends pretty early. So I'm gonna grab the blue marker that's all the way over here and I'm just gonna drag it back to frame nine so we can loop our animation. These markers specify where our animations start and stop. So I'm gonna drag this to zero, this one to nine, and now let's play it. Cool, so we have a basic bouncing ball. 
And as you can see, you can edit your drawings either by clicking them here on the timeline or in the layers tab, you can access all of your drawings, which means you can also set certain drawings to different blending modes. If I wanted to set one to pin light, for example, I could do that. So Clip Studio Paint has some really powerful features in regards to animation. For example, one of the features I find the most helpful is the 2D animation camera feature. You can specify which layers are affected by the camera by dragging those animation folders into the camera folder. You can easily create panning shots using the tweening functions, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's add some color to our bouncing ball. And to do that, we need to make a new animation folder, which is like a new layer. We can drag this animation folder underneath that first one. I'll name this one ball and I'll name the second one color. So now with our color animation folder selected, I'm just gonna drag this up a little bit. We can create a new cell and it's the same process. So I'm gonna grab the pen this time and I'm gonna select this green color. You can go ahead and color all the frames of your ball. Make a new cell. Okay, we can hit play. Awesome, now that's basically the gist of making an animation in Clip Studio Paint. If you wanna go further, you can add audio to your animation. One of my favorite features of Clip Studio Paint is being able to view the waveform of your audio. So all you have to do is go to the point in your animation where you want to add the audio, then click and drag the file onto the canvas. As you can see, the waveform will appear here. It will automatically create a new layer for the audio, and you can edit it here. The last thing we have to do is we can go ahead and export our animation. So we can go to File, Export Animation. We can do this as a GIF, as an image sequence, which is just a several pictures in a folder, or a movie, which is an MP4 video file. So let's hit Animate a GIF. Then we can select where we want it. I think I'll just put this on my SSD. Hit save. So we have our GIF settings. We can choose the resolution. I'm gonna go a little bit higher with the resolution, make it 1920 by 1080. The export range is from frame one to eight. That's exactly what we specified by the marker. So that's, that's good. We're gonna keep that. Frame rate 24, loop count unlimited. That sounds good. Now we can hit okay. You'll get this window telling you that your animated GIF export has been completed. So we can hit OK on that, go to my SSD, and here is the animation. So that is a basic animation workflow in Clip Studio Paint. Now that we have a basic workflow, I'm gonna go ahead and make something a little cooler. Okay, to check in with you guys, in case you're wondering how I got so far, I started with the background. So let's just close everything so I can introduce it to you in the order that I did it. So I had a thumbnail that I drew from another software when I was coming up with the idea for this animation. So I just dragged that into the layers panel in Clip Studio Paint. So I use that as my reference. Next, I sketched out some background elements based on the thumbnail. The way I did that is I went to layer ruler slash frame, add perspective ruler. It'll bring up this window, hit one point perspective, and then I drag the vanishing point. Make sure the horizon line was close to eye level. Likely you're probably going to be looking at the character's face, so you can just put the horizon line right near their face or near their eyes. I use that to sketch out this background in order to, in order to enable the perspective ruler. Just click this button right here on top and then your drawings will line up with it. Yeah, horizontal, vertical, and then also perspective, so you can draw cubes and such. Okay, next, I in a layer beneath this sketch layer, I added some values. So we got the foreground value is the darkest value. Then we got the midground, which is the second darkest, and then the background is white. I just double tap this paper texture right here, the one we set up earlier, and you can change the color of your background. Hit okay. Next, I put in my character. 
Now this is our A keyframe. You guys already know how to set up keyframes. So I put in my A and my B keyframe right here where he's, he's smashing the table <laughs> with this hammer. But what is he smashing? He's smashing this splinter, which it has two keyframes as well. It has just one and then it changes once you, it just disappears once he smashes it. So at this point, I wanna add some overshoot to my animation, but I, I'm pretty sure I already added it. B keyframe right here looks like some overshoot. So I'm gonna go next to this B keyframe, hit new animation cell. Then I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna turn this ruler off. I'm gonna draw this hammer sort of out of outside of this squashed position. My squash and stretch, and then this will be the B keyframe. Since we're using that first B keyframe as an overshoot, and this we'll just call the B extreme. So we have A, we have our anticipation, which is the A extreme. I like to draw pow effects around my extremes because they're extreme. Then we have the B extreme, which is our overshoot, and then we have B. Now we can finish drawing the B keyframe. Using my hand to figure out what these hand poses will be. All right, I think that'll do for now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let's add some colors. So I'm gonna create a new group layer for my character right here. And I'm gonna name this character group. Then I'm gonna grab my character animation folder with all of my frames in there and just drag it into the character group. I'm gonna minimize that animation folder, create a new animation folder called color, drag it underneath our character. Then we can go to the color animation folder, hit new cell. And then we can start adding the colors in. Now I can go to frame two, hit new cell, and draw in the value for each of these frames. I didn't think of that. The hammer has to overlap the background. So we can just go ahead and put that background group underneath this character group again. I'm gonna pick a color slightly darker and add some shadows for our character. Very, very minimal shadows. Finally, add some highlights. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna create a new animation folder and I'm just going to take the value of our character here and I'm going to add a new cell, make this splinter, this wooden splinter this color. Then I'm gonna go to when he covers it and create a new cell and I'm already finished. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Please leave your questions and what you would like to learn in Clip Studio Paint down in the comments below. I would love to continue this animation with you guys in the future. Huge thank you to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video. If you wanna check them out, you can find the link to clipstudio.net in the description. I wanna say a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the best. With that said, I will see you guys next time. Happy animating.